All right, great. So my name is Kyle David, and today we're going to look at naming a company. That's important. Uh, well, how does it go? And what is it? Um, sound of music. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. And yes, um, naming a company is the first thing. By the way, here I am in Cuenca next to the river at the Salina in Ecuador. So you know where I am. And uh, yeah, I got this gaming headset on. So we're going to play this game called... Uh, we're going to play this game called Naming Your Company. And uh, right on. Hopefully you can see that all. So we're going to start with a little, little case study in Kyle being an idiot. So maybe seven, eight years ago, I started a company called Takamoto Biogas. And uh, I named it that because Taka Taka means waste in Swahili, which is the language in Kenya, and Moto means fire. So we were turning waste into fire, so obviously it made a lot of sense to name it Takamoto, I thought. So I thought, but actually it doesn't mean, that's not what it means. It doesn't mean like fire from waste. It, it means something more like hot waste. Because moto actually it means fire, but it also means hot. But in this context, it sounds more like hot waste. So I came up with this kind of very funny sounding name to anyone who, any of our clients, all of our clients obviously spoke Swahili. So we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the new name should be, which was better. And we came up, we decided, well, why don't I just name it after myself? My last name is Shutter. So we named it Shutter Energy. And uh, we thought this would be better, but it was actually much worse because uh, shutter is pronounced shuta in, in, uh, in Kenya. They don't pronounce R's at the end of a word. And shuta means, of all things, fart. So I named my company Fart Energy. And uh, you know, funny enough, it actually made sense. Like we were basically selling farts, but it still wasn't a good name. And so now, now we actually changed the name of our company, but kept the old brand. It was a total mess. And this is how I was an idiot. So the next, now I'm starting another company. We're writing grants for social enterprise. So um, we did this before for our company, but we did lots of different things. And now I'm just focusing on this one thing because I realized it's really really important and so i posted i hired someone from upwork and you'll see in the description of the video um you can copy this text if you want and some i got some really great applications it was much cheaper than i thought it would be and uh you, maybe you're thinking um well i've already come up with a name so i don't really need to hire someone and You'll still, I'll show you by the end of this video why you still might want to hire a specialist. And, um, and, and I'll, by the end of this video, you'll see why you actually do probably want to outsource this, even if you do have the perfect name. Um, even if you do think you can save some money because it's totally worth it. And I'll tell you why. So, I got a guy who, who sent me some questions to think about for my company. Why, how, how should I name it? First question, what is your brand about? And I'll just answer some of these for me and then you can, you can uh, decide for you what makes sense for you. So we write, write grants and strategy for social enterprise in developing countries. Um, we want, what we really want is to improve entrepreneurs' chances of being successful, achieving their dream, having a positive impact on the world. If we can move them from, let's say, 30% chance of being successful to 35% chance of being successful, then that's a win for us. And that, that's, what, that's what it's about. So it's not just about winning grants. It's about how to make them more successful. It's a little bit bigger picture, right? It helps you with the naming of it. And if I were to describe what we do, it's like if McKinsey Consulting and LegalZoom had a child and that child grew up to be a grant writer. So it's some part of this strategy consulting combined with the software to kind of automate these things that are like every grant is pretty much the same thing with like a little twist, a little bit of squeeze of lemon on top of the grant. And then you've got um, a grant for a new company for a new, new application. So the next question is, what do you, um, 
want the feel of the brand to be. So we're, man, we're taking care of money for people. So should we trustworthy? But I also wanted to seem like fun. I wanted to seem like the beginning of a good story and, um, and maybe sound a bit like a mentor, like a Gandalf, a Dumbledore, a Morpheus, sort of all rolled into one. Maybe your wise aunt or wise uncle. Um, because we'll be giving sort of advice on how to raise capital. Next question, what makes you different? So what makes us special is that we focus on the unifying desire of all humans, and that is to belong to an important story. That's what makes our lives meaningful is the stories we tell. And to write good grants, I believe that they have to be a story. It has to be interesting because on the other side of the table, someone reading the grant is a human being and human beings all love stories. And so most grants are totally dry, lots of numbers. Um, but no, it, it, should, it should be something else. Um, it should be the story of, of someone, of a, of a Frodo combating everything uh, and overcoming everything in the world to, to save the world by, by bringing the ring, this uh, precious, uh, precious thing, uh, I mean, and destroying it. So that's, that's one thing that makes us different. The other one is that we align our interests with our client, where most consultants like lawyers or grant writers, they charge by the hour, regardless of whether they're successful or not. We charge an hourly rate and then take a commission if we win. So we charge a low hourly rate. Um, so everyone's got skin in the game and then we charge a commission if we win. So really, we, we really want to win these, these, grant, these grants. You know, We're not going to take money from people. We're not going to take on clients we don't think we can help be successful because that would be we'd be losing money that way um so yeah i want to incentivize our best grant writers to get a fat commission and make them want to stay with us and write more grants and help more entrepreneurs and then create that virtuous cycle so and that's really controversial in the industry a lot of grant writers are against um taking commission so you could say it's sort of um disruptive in a way and then Next question, what type of name do you want? Powerful, modern, traditional, fun, descriptive? For me personally, I always like descriptive as you could tell from either Shutter Energy or Takamoto Biogas. I had another company called the Thai Place Restaurant. You know, you can guess what we did at the Thai Place Restaurant without even needing like any kind of a slogan. So those are, those are some, some helpful questions there to get started, but I've put my answers to these questions and more questions. There's many more, but I don't want to bore you in the description. So you can click on that and see what these other questions would be. So you can think about naming your company. Um, and at this point, you know, you might, um, you might sort of be uh, tempted to, to do this yourself. Like I can do this, but I, I don't really recommend it. Um, so here's uh, here's a little little case study. This is Steve Jobs. He paid 100k for the Next logo. Um, you know, when he had his hiatus from Apple, he started a company called Next and paid 100k for it. And uh, it doesn't. It looks kind of like a silly logo now, but I think at the time it was it was innovative. And um, so there's a sort of a sense like that's you know 100k for that logo. That was that's what it cost. So if you're thinking it's going to be 100k for you, um, it won't be. There's plenty of very good um, branding experts who can do it for a whole lot less. And um, I think the, I found someone that was like $350, um, which is a great deal. So, so Glossy, what's this all about? Well, uh, when, <laughs> when we were transitioning between Takamoto Biogas and Shutter Energy as the company name, we... Uh, got out a bunch of Scrabble pieces and we were playing kind of Scrabble, trying to come up with a, what the next name would be. And we came up with some truly embarrassing names like Energy, and it was it was bad and it took a lot of time. And I, I don't know how much time we spent on naming um, the company. I would say we spent at least 40 hours between three or four of us. So that's like 160 hours. And if it costs like three hundred and fifty dollars for um, someone to a professional to take care of the naming and everything, then we were valuing our time at something like two dollars an hour. So I mean, obviously, I don't want to work for two dollars an hour. I don't want to set that expectation in my company. 
And the thing is, they don't just come up with the name. They also, you also want to do a few other things. You want to make sure there's no trademarks on it. You want to make sure you can get a good URL, um, a good website with that name. You want to make sure the social media accounts are available. You want to make sure that the company name is actually available in the jurisdiction where you want to register it. So, uh, so yeah, what can I say? Um, so those are some of the, the reasons. And so even if, even if you already think you've got a name, it's still worthwhile to, to hire someone, um, to come up with that name. Um, and there's really, there's two reasons for that. One is that entrepreneurs are notoriously bad at delegating. And this is a time to start practicing that. Like it's your baby. You know, you don't have to delegate naming your actual child to someone else though. I'm actually considering doing that as well, but for the company, absolutely hire someone else to take care of all the stuff. Don't value your time at $2 an hour. And the second reason is it takes a lot of work um, because you do have to go to different websites and figure out if the trademark is taken for this or if the social, you know, media accounts are taken. So anyway, that's that's the summary there. You can see um, links in the description. And I'll keep on posting some more um, videos after this. So subscribe. I think we're going to cover um, after this, we're going to cover hiring. We're going to cover why I hired a, uh, a business coach personally. Um, we're going to cover um, sales and why and whether you should get a co-founder. And the eternal question is, what business should you start? I was just talking with a friend recently about this. What business should she start? And uh, there's actually ways to think about this. So subscribe, and I, uh, I hope you... Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave some comments if you've had any similar um, experiences. So that's it. That's all from here from uh, Cuenca, Ecuador. Take care.